There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel and to another episode of Zooming In, which is a relatively new series on my channel where I have Zoom chats with bookish social media luminaries the world over to talk about a recently published article about some kind of book or literary topic online. And I would like to welcome back to my channel. It's her debut appearance on Zooming In, but not her first time on my channel. Erica from Louisiana. Hello again, Erica. Hey, Sean. Happy to be here. And I'm happy that we're now in such close proximity that we can both be drinking in the same time zone. Amen, brother. <laughs> I saw this article in LitHub just the other day, and it okay. was perfect for a discussion with Erica. It is called <laughs> A New Era for Boarding School Literature by Emma Staffaroni, and it came out on LitHub on September 7th. And one thing that I've just recently learned about Erica is that she is a devotee of boarding school lit. So I <laughs> thought this would be a great one for us mm -hmm. to talk about. And we're probably going to refer to the article a little bit, but really we're going to talk about Erica's obsession with boarding school lit. But first <laughs> off, what's your hot take on the article? Um, you know, she had some good points. Um, I really liked the whole academic culture is native culture um you know she talks about how a lot of kids in these novels are brought up to know they're going to go to boarding school it becomes part of their expectation and so i guess they're they're never really given an option and this is just the life they expect and so from there it's like you also get this i think what she appreciates in the article and why i'm drawn to prep school books and boarding school books is um you get this this perfect crucible of children that are forced to be together 24 seven. And so you get this, this whole subculture where you don't really have parental involvement. You don't have them worry about their siblings or things in their community. It's all like your whole life is wrapped up in this one little environment. And so it can be rife with racial tension, with um, class tension, hazing, all this kind of stuff can be going on and you get it all in this tiny little tight environment. And so it could be great fodder for a good story. So I think that's kind of what she mentions here in that article, which is what I can appreciate. So, And she also seems to make a distinction that maybe you and I don't necessarily think is valid between this new wave of boarding school lit and what had gone before. She uh, seems to valorize some of the newer the the newest crop of boarding school novels that have come out one of them is mrs s by k patrick that is pretty hot off the press as doing something different than the the old guard the catcher in the rye and a separate piece and so on and i haven't i'm not as widely read in boarding school lit as you are but mm, the know. things that she's the things that she's saying are being done that are new you think were have always been being done have yeah, always I mean, been she, being done. Uh, yeah, it's like she talks about how now it's dark and it's not and it's not romanticized and it's exposing all these things. And I think that's not the case. I mean, that's the whole um, the, the draw to read those kind of books is that they are dark and, and they can be nostalgic and also full of horrible experiences. And then so like these boys go through these things that are abusive or traumatic and then they grow up and they still reminisce with each other about their great boarding school days. And so. I think that's always been the case in, in these novels. I, I tend to lean more towards books that are the, the student experience more so than the faculty experience. Put some titles and authors to your expertise now, can okay. you? Ooh, yay. Oh, yay. Um, one that I really loved was A Good School by Richard Yates. I don't know that book. I had to go back and read my notes because I think I read it maybe eight years ago or so. But what I really liked about it was that he he talks about the school is sort of second tier. It's not as prestigious as maybe it once was because now they're admitting all these students that are need based, and so there you do have that class thing going on. And it's like, oh, it's still a good school, and so that's where the title comes from. Like, oh, it's it's still reputable. We're, we're clinging on. We're hanging on by our fingernails to you know still have some some reputation that's worthwhile. Yeah, it's it's really good, and you get a, a range of perspectives. You get like the headmaster's daughter, I think, is a character, and, and her trials and tribulations, and you get students, and and so it's like everybody in the school and and how they're experiencing this. Well, that's not as prestigious as it once was, but his writing is always 
amazing. I don't even probably have to ask, but have you read Revolutionary Road? Because that one oh, just obliterated me. Yes, five star read. And I want to read more of his stuff because Revolutionary Road was, I mean, above par. It was one of the best books ever. Yeah. yeah. The movie was well done, surprisingly. I if haven't seen have... the movie. I want to. I... Okay. Yeah. Well, you better get on that. Add that to make that number 45. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I definitely want to read more of his stuff because he's an exceptional writer. Uh, another one, Abigail by Magna Zabo, uh, translated. And I can't remember from what German, Romanian. Hungarian. I, I, be- I would believe it Hungarian, would be the. Hungarian. I think you're right. Yes. Hungarian. Abigail, have you read that? I've only read by that author, The Door, which I hated, but that's that's a, really? we don't need to get into that. Okay, I haven't read that yet. Abigail was really interesting, and it's named after the statue that she goes at, this this girl who was sent away to boarding school, and she goes out in the garden and writes her confessions to the statue of Abigail. It was very dark and interesting, and I really enjoyed it. There's one that came out recently in Memoriam by Alice Wynn, although not boarding school focused exactly. It was one of the best books I've read in quite some time. So Edwardian, you know, said just as World War I is breaking out. And so it starts out in boarding school because all these boys are coming of age and their brothers and the older students are being sent off to World War I to fight and they're romanticizing that and they think it's just great. And oh, and, and I don't think it's, it's not really hitting them. Oh, so-and-so's brother was killed in the war. Oh, isn't that great? Oh, look, his name was printed in the paper in the morning. And so, so you get that and you get their experience after they, they are being sent to fight in the trenches and, um, and how they mature and and how the boarding school kind of politics and their their rank in boarding school affects them when they're sent off to fight fantastic novel this tendency this literary tendency of yours did it develop in your childhood were you into boarding school you know, lit as a kid i don't think so i don't even know where this came about i think it's so foreign to my experience i mean i'm a product of public schools you know so I, I don't know where that came about, but I think it's just, it's such an interesting concept to me. And I, I just like the experience of being with your peers in this, like, without any kind of nurturing environment when you're sent away and it's just, you know, you're disciplined by the headmaster and that's it. And it's just kind of this, you know, orphan Annie kind of thing going on. Um, I just think it's interesting. I don't seek out boarding school lit as an adult, but I have read some that I quite liked. And you have kind of brought it, you have foregrounded it for me that it is actually kind of, a, at least in terms of theme or topic, a genre of fiction. But as a kid, I discovered, and I have no idea why, it must have originally been from the library, that there was a series of British novels. They had were published, I think, in the 40s or the 50s. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I was a kid in the 70s, they were reissued because there was a TV show in the UK that I never got to see and the the series is Jennings, and the author is Anthony mm-hmm. Burridge. And they, they were set in a boarding school. And I loved them. They were really funny. And Jennings was the main character, obviously. And he was about 11 or something. And then his sidekick yeah. was Derbyshire. Derbyshire, who had curly red hair. And mm-hmm. they got into all manner of mischief. Sure. And the pictures from the TV show were on the covers of the editions I had. I'll be putting some on the screen as I'm talking. And I had, again, just to keep in mind, I'm not speaking pedophilically. I'm talking about how I, when I was right. eight or nine, I had such yeah, a crush yeah. on the Jennings boy. Uh, he reminded me of one of the boys from my school that I had a crush on. And But more than that, I loved the novels and I've always wanted to reread them. So that's my earliest. I'm sure Enid Blyton probably wrote some books that were set at boarding schools. But I, yeah, Mallory something, something. But anyway, yeah, I read some as, as a, kid and then as an adult here is a book that you and i are going to buddy read it's going to be a reread for me it's a gay novel called now and then by william corlett i happen to have two copies i said very excited about that very excited about that Mm -hmm. i kept i kept my copy that i read back in the 90s that has underlining in it very good but uh, this is about an adult gay man who is reminiscing about Having been at boarding school and there having been some, I believe it was a gay scandal that he was involved in back in the day. And so mm-hmm. now and then each chapter now is the present and then is the past. I don't think I needed to explain that. Really looking forward to rereading this with you. It's going to be hard for me to wait. So, yes, yeah, go ahead. 
<laughs> Whenever you're ready. Will, I am game. Will, yeah. you know, there are some weird ones out there, you know, that are still kind of fitting the theme of boarding school. But it's like, you know, you kind of get this gray area. It's like, does college count? I don't know. Have you heard of uh, Vada Nostra? Um, I, I've heard of it. I have not read it. Totally bizarre. Really enjoyed it. Really different. Very strange. And I think there's just been this upsurgence in, in interest after Harry Potter and all that. And now there's a whole bunch of, you know, fictionalized magical boarding school books that are trying to jump on that bandwagon. So it's a little different than what you and I, I think, would be interested in. Well, you know me. I only read literary fiction. <laughs> yeah. I would take a step back from the the thesis that the author of this article in LitHub makes to say that obviously the newest, the most recent boarding school fiction does shine a light on aspects of the boarding school experience from the perspective of groups that we didn't find a voice in literary in fiction Very true. until quite recently. Very true. Queer protagonists, racialized black yes. protagonists. Now, the article by Emma Staffaroni mentions a bunch of new novels and one memoir which of the ones that she mentions interested you the most you know i haven't read any of them um but i had heard of some of them um prep i've heard about really interested to read that even you know nonfiction. um i'm really interested in um k patrick's mrs s that sounds very interesting i tend to gravitate towards books that now have a queer protagonist just because it's a voice that hasn't been around for that long and it hasn't ever been at the forefront. And, and I just find that to be fascinating when we get a main character, queer protagonist, especially in a, in a setting like this, like as a faculty member or a prep school book. Oh yeah, that'd be really cool. So, and I was interested in the Rebecca Mackay book when it came out as well. It's been on my to read. So I really want to get to those someday, someday. <laughs> um, did you read Never Let Me Go? That that's a that could be a boarding school book. I think just... it can. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and when I put it down, I thought that was a five star read, and then within about three or four months, it went down to a three star read in my brain. Say it as um, well. Well, I obviously need to reread it because I can't justify that d deterioration all these years later but i'm not a big fan of him but that's probably really? the, of, all, of all the books he's written that's the one that i probably like the best and it was a three-star read the rest ah. of them i bailed on the rest yeah. of them i bailed on i mean yeah i mean remains of the day was just so good oh they all haven't no. tried that one that's oh. crazy i haven't tried that one. uh but you know i remember reading never let me go and i was reading it and then also doing the audiobook simultaneously so i could kind of cheat and read while I was driving and I remember I was driving to pick up my children at daycare and I was finishing the book listening to it and so I was reading I was listening to the ending right when I pulled up at daycare and I had to park the car and like cry my eyes out <laughs> before I went in and got the kids that book was devastating so good uh, to circle back to some of the uh -huh. things that she I don't think that the art the author of this article in the uses the phrase social control but really is that not one of the big themes of boarding school lit? I mean, it's a way of almost imprisoning the student body. Mm -hmm. And so I can't let this conversation end without mentioning a new subgenre of that, which I didn't think of it, this until we started talking. And that is Indigenous residential schools in North America, which are very much yes. obvious boarding schools that yes. were so coercively, malevolently harmful to the students mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's a new one that's just come out and i think it's on the national book award so let me pull that one up it was a book that was on my radar that has just come out and it's set in an indigenous boarding school in america yeah i would be interested in that most certainly a council of dolls by mona susan power oh and yes have, yeah have um, you heard of it i've heard of it Yes, I've heard good things would... about it. I've heard nothing but good things about it. There have been, there's been a lot of nonfiction writing about residential schools in a, in the Canada, yeah. and it's uh, one of Canada's deepest shames historically, not just historically, coming right up to the present. The last residential school in Canada closed when I was in graduate school. 
Like that's how recent oh, uh-huh. the uh, intergenerational trauma is still, you know, working itself out in the most horrifying of ways with addiction and this and that and this and that mm-hmm. in the indigenous mm-hmm. population in Canada. So it's something that I do a lot of reading about, uh, nonfiction mm-hmm. wise. But mm-hmm. uh, this novel sounds pretty darn interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you regret that you didn't go to boarding school? Would you? Oh, no. <laughs> um, no. No, I think I would have been terrified and cried my eyes out probably the entire time. But I, I just think it's it's interesting, you know, boys of certain class in a certain time period, it was just expected. Just you get that that small environment and, and the class struggle just carries through and then, you know, you get you get the hazing, you get the sexual abuse, you, and boys that are pressured by their dads to grow up and become part of the business, and maybe that's not what they want, and, and all that kind of stuff going on at that time. So it's just, it always makes for a very tender and, and interesting story that I just never experienced growing up. So, mm-hmm. Well, you've piqued my curiosity to read more widely in this subgenre, and I'm looking forward to our buddy Reed. Erica, thanks for shining a light on well, this thank article. Thank you. It was so fun. Thank you so much for having me, Sean.